Hello there, Mad Mike here, and welcome back to the channel. Um, and today I want to talk about a subject that I think is probably going to come up in the near future, uh, especially when we're talking about, you know, box office results in the coming years from both Warner Brothers and Disney. Um, and that is, uh, can the DCEU, now that it seems to be somewhat revitalized, um, come back and actually contend with the MCU for a place at the box office? Because let, let's let's be very honest, before... Uh, COVID, you know, when they had their crowning achievement, which was supposed to be Justice League, um, they were a laughing stock. Then they've had two relatively good hit movies since then, and then you also had Birds of Prey, which was a massive train wreck. Um, so their their track record isn't exactly spotless. They've gotten better in recent history, but that's really about it. Um, but they've unveiled their their slate or their next three films. Uh, or three, I should say three upcoming films, um, and plus another extra kind of tease for another film that they're doing. So th they have four really, what I would consider to be high-profile movies at this point that are going to be coming out. Three of them are going to be hitting theaters next year, um, and that is the, uh, that is, well, I shouldn't say theaters for one of them, but that is uh, Suicide, The Suicide Squad, which is the pseudo-sequel to Suicide Squad from 2016, um, and this one is directed by James Gunn. This is the film that uh, he's coming to do uh, for Warner Brothers after that whole little thing where Marvel got rid of him and then brought him back. Um, so he's contracted to do this one. So he, uh, the list of characters in that film is just insane, and I only assume that we're only going to see you know large amounts of certain ones of them because they're just going to get murked over the course of, of the movie. He's actually going to kill off a fair amount of characters, which the first Suicide Squad killed off a couple of people, but not uh, probably like, I think I remember correctly, three or four of them died in that, but this one, you could have a very high body count uh, because none of these uh, people, except for maybe Margot Robbie, because they might want to continue with that character are safe in this. Um, which is a good thing or a bad thing for some people. Uh, so, you know, that that's becoming more and more high profile. That's trending up. You know, obviously you have a lot of heavy actors in there. You have uh, Idris Elba. You have John Cena, who, again, is a, even though he's not an outstanding actor, he is a popular actor. Um, you know, you got, uh, obviously I said Margot Robbie's going to be back. Um, you have uh, Jai Courtney coming back as Captain Boomerang, which I don't necessarily know how many people want that back, but that was pretty funny in the first film, at least. Um, you got uh, Joel Kinnaman and Viola Davis each coming back. Uh, so there is some returning stuff from that first movie, so I'm curious if they can kind of keep that so that uh, it doesn't necessarily bleed into this new film too much, because I, it looks very, very different tonally um, to the first movie. So, I mean, that that's a big thing. Um, and then you have, obviously, Robert Pattinson's The Batman, uh, which is going to be hitting theaters next year. Uh, so, you know, that's one that's very anticipated. That trailer got a lot of positive reviews. Um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, the, like I said, the only thing that I know people have been kind of mentioning is the, the emo Batman thing. But it is kind of funny because all of the Batman in movies, for the most part, they wear eye makeup to get that, like, dark effect. Um, and it's hilarious because whenever they take off the, the, the cowl, they don't have the makeup on anymore, even though it was very obvious that it was makeup. So this is actually one of the first ones that actually shows him still wearing the makeup, which is kind of amusing. Um but you have a lot of high-profile people in the... Well, I shouldn't say a lot, but you have some pretty high-profile people in there. You have Robert, uh, Robert Pattinson, who's coming off of The Lighthouse, um, and he's also going to be in Christopher Nolan's Tenet. So he, he's been do, getting a lot of work lately. So uh, you know, And also in that trailer, he looked really good as Batman. I actually really liked the way that he's able to move and maneuver and kind of how he stands in the suit. Um, so... I'm excited about that, and then you also have the, uh, you know, you have Sny the Snyder Cut, which, uh, you know, the trailer came out for that, which has a lot of people excited, and like I said, that's not going to theaters, that's going straight to HBO Max, but that's still a big pull in Warner Brothers' direction, because they own HBO Max. Uh, so, it, it would only make sense for them to, you know, promote their own brand, so to speak, but I do think that a lot of people, especially Snyder fans, are very, very excited for that, and that's going to get HBO Max a lot of subscribers. Um, so that is something that, uh, you know, makes sense to them from a business perspective to send that over there. And, uh, you know, th they had a whole plethora of other things that they were talking about. There were video games that were getting announced. Uh, they had some other uh, projects that were, were, that were going right now. Uh, I don't think they really gave too, too many updates on some other stuff, but 
uh, the point is, is that, that DC is very buzzing right now because of this. And it, honestly, it's been building up uh, probably in the last like two to three years since Justice League, this kind of good faith type of thing. Uh, so, you know, they, they've, they've kind of been gaining themselves back a little bit by showing that they're willing to make actually, you know, put actual effort into making these films instead of just trying to churn it out like a Marvel method. And the other reason why I think DC might be able to pass them is because uh, Disney and Marvel, you know, they operate on this conveyor belt system for films. And I've gone over this in videos before where they just every year they have all these tentpole films and they almost eat the sometimes I shouldn't say almost sometimes they actually do eat into each other's profits uh, because they're out in theaters at the same time you know some of the the Marvel ones you had uh, Black Panther and Infinity War and then Captain Marvel and Endgame uh, which overlapped each other to a bit I think actually Endgame overlapped into Spider Man as well uh, so you know you had that even though that probably wasn't that much at that point it's still it's some overlap and then they also have all their other tentpole films from stuff like Pixar to the Disney live-action remakes, to Star Wars, you know, until recently. Um, you know, you had to sprinkle all those films in there as well. And they were planning on adding more and more to the slate. I think 2021, or I don't know, again, I don't know if any of those things are, are going to change. But in 2021, originally, they were actually had four MCU films planned to come out in that year alone. Um, so it, it, there's so, so much. And it's just been backed up because of this coronavirus stuff. Because it's just... The way the conveyor belt works is they have so many things backing up that they that's why Mulan is going direct to Disney Plus because they can't wait anymore to put it out there. They have to continue to put out the slate of films uh, so that they can begin more productions. Uh, so and also you know a lot is tied to that box office as well for the future if they wanted to make a sequel or something like that. So they they need that information from those movies at this point and they need the money too because they're spending money on advertising for these films every day that they're not in theaters. And, you know, they'll be spending advertising probably for days after it's been in theaters as well. So the longer they draw that out, there's just the more money that they're burning. So eventually you're going to see stuff. I think Black Widow is probably going to hit Disney Plus um, if theaters don't open up relatively soon, you know, to a, a full enough degree. Um, I know they have started opening up in some areas, I believe. So, you know, they're starting to get back to normal a little bit. But, um, you know, we're, we're still waiting on, you know, a lot of the, the box office to really return with a full opening. Uh, so you're not going to get all that. And for Disney, when they dump, you know, $200 million into a film, that a lot of the times, you know, that gets made up because of the large box office. Because, you know, it's a Marvel film. It makes a lot of money. That's why they don't like putting them on stuff like Disney Plus because then you hide it behind a paywall and you also you don't get as much money because multiple people can view the movie now. It's basically, you know, I I don't know exactly uh, how they would do it if it's similar to Milan, where Milan is you pay thirty dollars and you can watch the movie whenever. It's like a digital purchase. Um, with Black Widow, maybe they'll go more the rental route of okay, you know, you have to pay this much and you can rent the movie for x x amount of hours, and then once it's available for download, you can actually buy the movie or something like that. Um, you know, I I wouldn't surprise me if they started going that route if they start releasing more films like that on Disney Plus. So, like I said. DC is doing stuff to bolster their theatrical films right now because, again, they're coming out with two films next year that are, look like they're going to be very strong. And then also, I forgot about the fourth one, too, uh, Black Adam, which had its you know whole thing where apparently he's going to be fighting the Justice Society of America, which, again, I'm not going to dive into that too much here because that's just very specific DC, type, DC stuff where it's kind of like an alternate version of the Justice League. Um, but they did confirm, I think they'll have Hawkman in it. There's going to be a bunch of stuff going on with that. So there, that's coming up for them again in 2022. So you have all of this stuff that's kind of in the next couple of years. And you're not pointing people too far in the future. That's the other thing that Marvel kind of does is they point people like four or five years in the future. When you're coming out with two to three films a year, I don't think you need to point people past the first couple of years because they're just going to start getting confused. Um, but, you know, they... With DC, it's really just mostly in the, in the next couple of years. It's, uh, the, the stuff that we really care about is 2021 and 2022. Uh, and basically, you have very strong candidates going into 2021, and you also have 2022 with Black Adam and possibly more coming you know, in the time in between those two. So there's still a lot going on, but I think DC has a chance. They have a chance to surpass Marvel, in, you know, at least at the box office. 
Um, because I think with that, with the and also because of the weak slate uh, that they have for Phase Four of the MCU. So, you know, all you really have are you know Black Widow, which is probably going to do relatively well, Eternals, which is an untested property, uh, Shang Chi, which an, uh, which is an untested property, um, you know, Doctor Strange Two, which you know that that should at least be somewhat interesting. That's probably going to be the high point for me of that whole thing. Um, as well as, you know, Black Panther 2 and Captain Marvel 2, which I don't expect anything insane out of. I don't think they're going to do the same numbers as the first ones for obvious reasons I've explained multiple times, but usually to do with their close proximity and association with larger films like Infinity War and Endgame. Um, but again, that's, uh, that's neither here nor there, but I, like I said, I think DC can make it happen. I think they can capture audiences now. They have a better chance because of, you know, the problems that Disney is having right now with their release schedule. So, but I want to know what you think. Do you think DC is doing well enough where you think if these movies, you know, start hitting a lot more, uh, that they can actually surpass, uh, Marvel, at least in terms of the, uh, you know, the, their presence at the box office, or do you think this is kind of just like a neck and neck battle type of thing, and Marvel's going to keep its end up, DC will keep its end up, and this will just keep going for a little while, and maybe we'll get some interesting films out of it. Um, as, as usual, put your thoughts below. I like to read them. Uh, hit the bell for notifications. Hit the like button. Subscribe, and remember, I live my life free of compromise. Do you?